Heaven is here today. Heaven is not some faraway place. Heaven will invade this place today. Glory to God. Stay tuned to this channel. You'll hear more. Before we go there, I have some formalities that I must take care of. And um, I, I want to thank you for sincerely praying. There's so many people praying for Vicky and I when we're in New Zealand and doing outreach over there. So we felt your prayers and we absolutely absorbed your prayers. I want to thank Pastor Chris for oversighting the church. Glory to God. Let's give him a hand this morning. And um, yesterday, the, the, this church actually hosted the FN, FQ, sorry, NQF Fire Forum. And glory to God. 60 people were registered for the conference yesterday, and 60 people were fed two smokers and two meals, one of them being a roast. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank right now the setup team. Thank you very much. Just give them a hand. I would also like to thank our cafe hospitality team. Glory to God, they actually prepared a total, if we include smokers, they prepared and fed out 240 meals yesterday. I think that's a valiant effort. Thank you very much. That's the two smokers and the two meals that they, yeah, they had to make for 60 people. I also want to thank the pull down and pack away team, glory to God, who were here late last night. Thank you very much. Give them a hand. And the reset team that were here this morning and glory to God, just cleaning up after everything and making sure we could have church possible today. I actually think all you guys are amazing because um, it's an incredible thing, but people come here and they look around the building and I think, this is church. And I um, actually spoke to some people yesterday who we're having more contact with because they're quite interested in what we're doing. But I want to say to you, what you do, you do unto the Lord. And God bless you because God gets all the glory. Who's ready to be touched dramatically by God? I mean, like really touched by God. Let's bow our heads before the Lord. Father, we thank you as we lift up this month's topic, Lord, which is healing. And Father, you know that we've just come off the field. And Father, we've seen hundreds of healings, Lord, in the last two weeks. Some of them profound, Lord God. But Lord, it's not about Vicky. It's not about me. It's about Jesus. And it's about these people that are before us today, Lord God. Father, I thank you. You're going to raise up many healing technicians today, Lord God. And Lord, today, I thank you as we look at the, Lord, the importance of giving thanks through the book of Luke 17, verses 11 to 19, Father. And it tells us what to do and what we should never do. Father, to you be the praise, the honor, and the glory. Let's look at the accurate description of what we should do and what we shouldn't do. Verse 11, Luke 17. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Verse 12. He entered a certain village and there he, there he met 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off. They lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master. I want you to think about this. They knew exactly who he was, exactly what he could do for them. Leprosy in those days was a death sentence. Have mercy upon us. Guess what Jesus does? Verse 14, when, they, when he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a, with a loud voice and glorified God. He came back glorifying God, magnifying God, giving thanks to God. And it's an amazing thing when you get a death sentence removed from you, the least you think you could do was give God some glory. Is that a, is that a good thing to say? Give God some glory? You know, he removes a death sentence from you. He removes an incurable disease. Verse 16, this man fell down upon his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten who were cleaned? But where are the other nine? Verse 18, Were there not found any to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, he said, Arise, go your way. 
Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. According to what you believe, glory to God, you will receive today. And today God wants to impart something into you that I I call, it's, it's an amazing gift of divine healing. It's got nothing to do with the medical profession. It's got nothing to do with anyone else except Jesus. And God wants to empower you to heal a sick planet. We've got a lot of sick people out there. We're told that if we pray for one another, you will be healed. The Great Commission, Mark 16, verse 15, it says, Go into all the world and preach the good news. What's the good news? The gospel. He who believes will be saved, and he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. In the last two weeks, we have seen so many people set free from so many different things, so many testimonies coming back. Glory to God, deliverance is happening in every single place we went. It says they'll speak in new tongues. Verse 18, they'll take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, by no means hurt them. And it says they will lay hands upon the sick, and the sick will recover. He's speaking to every one of us. This is not for the fivefold ministry. This is for every believer. Every believer, glory to God, has within them the power and the ability, but it's going to be according to the faith that you have. So step one, first step, point one, is Jesus is willing to heal all people. He's not willing to heal some. Luke 5, we find another leper. Verses 12, there was a man full of leprosy, saw Jesus, fell at his face, implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Verse 13, Jesus put his hand out and touched him and said, I am willing. Immediately the leprosy left him. Now we're going to think about this scenario here because leprosy, glory to God, Vicky and I have actually prayed for lepers. And leprosy has got the ability to make people's noses drop off, fingers disappear toes gone and says this man was full of leprosy and says immediately he was healed can you imagine being there because I believe the fingers would have grown back he would have got a new a new nose without a plastic surgeon glory to God we don't know exactly what happened it says immediately the leprosy left him see the presence of the Lord the earth heaves the earth heaves at the presence of the Lord and when the presence of the Lord comes in mm, mm, Amazing things happen. We're talking about divine dunamis power, explosive power. The Word of God says in the book of Luke 440, all those who were sick with various diseases came to him and he healed them. Matthew 424 says, all those who were sick, demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, Jesus laid hands upon them and healed them all. You know, I had the, the pleasure of meeting Pastor Don Dactamel, and um, he was one of the guest speakers at the conference in Firefall in New Zealand, and he shared how he was a paraplegic, had a horrific motorcycle accident, paralyzed from the neck down, prayed and prayed and prayed, glory to God, and God healed him completely. Quite an active man, quite a fit man, 70 years old, and he was jumping around like like a young teenager, glory to God, because He knows the healing power of Jesus Christ. He knows the healing power that is available. The Word of God says that Jesus, as far as I'm concerned, he's like God's mobile clinic. He's here, there, and everywhere. Luke 6.1 says, And the multitude sought to touch him, for power went out of him, and he healed them all. Jesus Christ is a walking, disease-free zone. There is no sickness in heaven. There are no flus. There are no coughs. There are no cancers. There are no epilepsies. There's no nothing in heaven is a disease-free place. And I believe, glory to God, that God wants a disease-free church. How does it happen? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We've already looked at the scripture that says, your faith has made you will. The word of God tells us, about the blind man in Luke 8, 18, 38. It says, the blind beggar cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus said to him, receive your sight, for your faith has made you will. 
The next verse of Scripture says, immediately he received his sight. It's an amazing thing when you actually get a hold of what God is saying to you because he wants you to be a healing technician today. What's a healing technician? That's someone who's been taught. That's someone who's been trained. That's someone who actually believes in the Word of God. Glory to God. Because it is not just for the fivefold ministry. It is for every believer. Second point. Jesus Christ is the healing vine. You are the branches. So first point, glory to God, Jesus is willing to heal people. Second point, he is the healing vine. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Guess what? The vine wants to use you. You can lay hands upon the sick. It's not just for the evangelists. You can do this. But you've got to believe what God tells you because inside of you, inside of you lives the master physician. See, he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He's the God amongst all gods. But he's also the doctor amongst all doctors. And let me tell you something about Dr. Jesus. He's not practicing. All other doctors that are not being derogatory are practicing. He's not practicing. He is healing. Glory to God. Someone should shout amen right there. Now have a look at what he says about you. John 14, 12 says, Most assuredly I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these shall he do, for I go unto the Father. Oh, let's just bust a few religious barriers here. Jesus said, you're going to do the same works that I do and greater. Can you do greater works than Jesus? Everyone goes, oh, I can't do that. No, he said you're going to do greater works. I didn't say it. Pastor Chris didn't say it. Jesus Christ said you're going to do what I do and greater works than these. What does that mean? Well, that means when you get some healing evangelist on television and he says, put your hands up to the screen and that power just flows. Jesus didn't do that. Catherine Kuhlman, over the radio waves, it says hundreds of people get healed on her healing program, speaking over the radio waves. Jesus didn't do that. But he said, you're going to do the same things I have done and greater. And that little religious spirit rises up. And says, oh, I can't do, can't do more works than Jesus. He said, you're going to. He said, you're going to. See, Jesus is not standing up in heaven freaking out. Ooh, they might do greater. He wants you to go out and do greater works than him. He wants you to go out and, and experience the freedom and the liberty because he is the vine, you are the branches. He wants you to do greater works. God is looking today for divine healing technicians. We're told clearly to heal the sick. We're told clearly that God wants to bring about, glory to God, a disease-free a disease zone. Believers like John G. Lake practice this dominion. John G. Lake was in the jungles of Africa, and thousands of people were dying of the Black Plague. John G. Lake, the, the doctors looked at him because he spent months and months praying for the sick. The Black Plague, was a, it, it's, it's something that you don't want to handle. It's something you don't want to be around. It's the type of thing you wear gloves and masks and make sure you don't come into contact with it. And the doctors there were astounded at John G. Lake. So he said to him today, he said, get the foam of a dying man and put it in my hand, put my hand under the microscope. And he had the spittle of a dying man. They stuck his hand under the, micro, uh, under the microscope and they watched the germs just shrivel up and die because this man was blood bought. He was blood covered. And John G. Lake, glory to God, amazing, amazing ministries. Hallelujah. He's one of the products of Azusa Street. And he knew all about the name of Jesus. And if I can just give you a little bit of instruction today. Don't ever agree with what Satan wants. Because he wants you to believe that you can't heal the sick. Start agreeing with what God is saying and what God wants. Stop kneeling for a healing and start believing, 
Glory to God. Stop trying to be a Christian and start training to be one. Don't think I'm a civilian. No, I'm a soldier of the cross. When I enlisted in this army, I went straight into boot camp and started being trained by Pastor Adam how to heal the sick, how to cast out demons. And see, you've been given a badge of authority. And this is the way that it works. Every Christian has one. If you get a police officer, and we got a 350 horsepower Mack semi-trailer coming down the highway at 100K. He's got two trailers on, traveling, traveling at 100K with 60 ton traveling towards a police officer. What's the police officer do? He doesn't get on in his knees and pray and think, oh, I hope he stops. He's got the badge of authority on, puts his hand out. That's all they have to do. And that truck starts going through those air brakes, starts going down through the gears and comes to a grinding halt because someone, someone, someone who has been taught, someone who has been trained, someone who understands authority is exercising authority. Do you realize every single one of you have got authority over sickness? You've got authority over demons, every single one of you. So my third point is this, add faith to the name. You pray in Jesus' name. Don't crunch up your face and start squeezing out. Oh, I'm going to squeeze out that. No, just believe what God told you to do. Believe that he's going to do it. Sickness, disease, infirmity must bow to Jesus. The name, Acts 3.6. There's a cripple at church sitting out the front gate. And Peter said, silver and gold I have none, but what I have I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He didn't say in, in the name of the church or the name of this. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. By faith, in verse 7, he took him by the right hand. Listen to this, and lifted him up. Why did he do that? Because it says immediately his ankle bones received So. Peter wasn't just happy with just praying for the guy in the name of Jesus. He grabbed his hand and said, come on, get up, get up, get up. Do you know how many cripples I've seen walk? One lady in Rancho Cucamonga, California, 87 years old, couldn't walk. Prayed for her, said, get out of the wheelchair. No, 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 I can't. I said, I'm not asking you if you can. I asked two of my men to pick her up, hold her up, pull the wheelchair away. That was her security blanket. I said, go, lady. She shocked me because this lady took off backwards. Forget about Michael Jackson moonwalking and this and that. This lady just took off backwards at speed. The whole place erupted. There was 120 people gathered in one, one house, and the power of God exploded, and glory to God, people were healed left, right, and center. On that trip, we saw 11 cripples get out of wheelchairs and walk. 11 cripples in 14 days. Why? Because you speak the name of Jesus and then you add faith, all right? The faith is when he took him by the right hand. The result, in verse 8, so he, the cripple, leaping, stood up and walked and entered the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. So he was dancing around the temple, just giving God the glory, saying, praise God, I'm healed, I'm healed. You've got to realize that you're a commander, I don't ever ask sickness to leave. I command it to leave, and it does. Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand the worlds are framed by the word of God. You've got to understand how much power you've got living inside of you. If we'll just activate that power. You know, and the revelation that I've had over the last three or four weeks. I was in worship one day, and I saw two hands appear in front of me. And he said, son, I uphold the universe in these hands. Not the galaxy, the universe. He holds the universe. And the hands are only a small part of the human body. You got the rest of Jesus. He's, he's got the universe in his hands. How big and how mighty is the God that we serve if he can hold the universe where Hubble telescope scientists are now telling us that there could be 50 million, 100 million other galaxies like our galaxy. We don't know. 
But one thing I can tell you, our galaxy is massive, but the universe is by far, far bigger than that. And he holds it in the palm of his hands. Romans 8, 11, I remind myself of this all the time. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, now bodily dwells inside of you. He lives inside of you. He wants to do amazing things with you. He wants to use you, glory to God. So you may be, as Genesis said in 1, 3, let there be light. You know, you can shine your light in the darkness. And today I'm going to share some testimonies with you because we have seen God do amazing and incredible things for the last two weeks. And I don't want it to stop. I don't want what God did to stop. I want it to continue, glory to God. It started here before we left. When God said, pull that Bible out and get some people to read, glory to God. And people couldn't read the Bible. And people got slain in the spirit, drunk in the spirit, unable to walk. Some started laughing, others started crying. Let me tell you something, there's nothing wrong with doing whatever God wants you to do. What's wrong is when we we move in the flesh. God doesn't want the flesh, God wants the spirit. And if he wants you to laugh today, laugh. He wants you to cry, cry. He wants you to know that you've have, you have power, you have the power, the ability, and the authority. And you might say, but what if it doesn't work? My answer is, what if it does? Because that's, what, that's every time I lay hands upon someone, I hear that foul, filthy negativity. What if it doesn't work? Well, what if it does? What if it does? What if God heals that person? So we started two weeks ago when we went to the Encounter Fire 4 conference. I was invited as one of the guest speakers, and there were two guest speakers, and we did a total of seven sessions, glory to God, with many, many people intoxicated with God, unable to stand right from the word go. We saw God do some outstanding things, glory to God, with youth, I've never seen so many young people attracted to a church, absolutely inebriated with God. Healings, every single service without fail, 20, 30 healings. Deliverances, demons coming out of people left, right, and center. People coming back and testifying that I've been set free of this, set free of that. I don't know how many people we saw set free from fear. Anxiety just left. Glory to God. I'm going to touch on that conference shortly. We went from Auckland, where the devil did a pretty good job of trying to get us off to a bad start. I've never seen so many plane problems in my whole life. Changed gates twice, changed boarding times twice, to the point where they changed planes. We arrived in Auckland at 3 a.m. in the morning. The devil thought, well, I'll just get them off to a bad start. Maybe I... No. That made me even more determined. So we did the conference, glory to God, and we moved on to Bream Bay, which is up north. We conducted three services there. We saw around 20 people give their lives to Christ, glory to God, some for the very first time. We saw many, many testimonies of pain leaving bodies. Others were delivered. Many testified of being set free. We then flew from Bream Bay to Auckland, And from Auckland, we drove down to Rotorua, where we were picked up at Rotorua and then driven over to Kaurau, Kaurau. And this is an amazing little district, this one. This is Red Flag District. This is where you find the headquarters of the mongrel mob. And people are afraid to walk the streets. But in Kaurau, at Atomic Church, the glory fell. Many, many young people healed, delivered, much holy laughter, many drunk in the spirit, more commitments at Kaurau, right in the middle of a red flag district, glory to God, claiming this territory for the enemy, but God just moved, and strangely enough, the biker clubhouse, I've never seen anything like it, there's two driveways, the biker clubhouse is right next to the house of hope the AOG church. And I thought, man, 
house of hope and house of darkness. Woo! Do you know how many of them have been saved? It's amazing. We then went back to Rotorua and we conducted three more services. Pastors were negotiating one with the other. We were supposed to go to Levin, but the pastor from Levin was approached by the pastor at Rotorua and said, we, we want to have some services here. Glory to God, we end up doing three more services in Rotorua at Atomic Church, Pastor Madai, and uh, the Holy Ghost fell in these services. Again, many, many drunk in the spirit, but there's some outstanding things because the youth from Kaurau came over to Rotorua. And I got a few of them up to testify. And the first one that come up, big tall lad, and um, I said, tell me what happened. He said, Pastor, I'd never, ever have been on the floor, ever. But he said, as soon as you started praying, I, I couldn't stand up anymore. And he, he started laughing and, and got delivered, amazingly delivered from a lot of things. And I said, that's really good that you got touched. But what, what's happened to you? He said, I've been out on the streets inviting the youth to come. He said, I want to get every youth member in Rotorua and I want to bring them to this church. A person who's never invited anyone has been out there inviting people to come to church. I met two young men that they brought to church, pulled up at church, and here's this young man standing right on the, right on the sidewalk. And I thought I'd do the pastoral thing. Hey, how you going? My name's Jeff. He told me his name, and I said, you fellowship here? He said, no, I don't go to church. He said, I've never been to church in my life. I said, well, what are you doing here? He said, this man invited me. And he invited this other man from Chile. I got the youth to stand up and testify, and each one had amazing testimonies of transformation. It's not about laughing. It's not about crying. It's not about getting drunk. It's about transformation. Things change in people's lives. As I'm interviewing the youth, the power of God is falling upon them, which I'm going to show you very shortly. I've got footage of some of the stuff that happened. I've now got a whole bunch of youth on the floor under the power of God, some crying, some laughing, some being delivered, others being healed. The young man that had never been to church, wasn't having an altar call, got up and came to the front and said, uh, I said, can I help you? And he said, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening here, but I want it. He's not even saved, not even saved. I said, let me pray for you. He ended, up, he ended up on the floor and power of God hit him and the young Chile man came up from Chile. He ended up on the floor and he was all bug-eyed because I said to him, I said, close your eyes. And his eyes were just white. He wasn't shutting his eyes for nothing, man. He went down wide-eyed, laying on the floor, looking around thinking, what, the, what happened here? 55 people got saved at that service. You listening? 55 commitments to the Lord. Glory to God. We then moved on to <laughs> that first night. We finished, I don't know what time it was, like 11 o'clock, whatever it was, 10.30, 11 o'clock. The youth moved from there to McDonald's where they had another Holy Ghost service. The McDonald's staff were freaking out because they had all this youth laughing loudly, praying for one another, getting slain in the spirit in McDonald's. Who thinks that's a good thing for McDonald's? Go Macca. Glory to God. At the youth service, which you'll see shortly, another 10 commitments were made. So there's 20 in Bream Bay, 15 in Kaurau, 55 at Atomic Church, another 10 added to that. Glory to God. Whilst in Rotorua, the C3 church pastors invited us to come and pray for a doctor. She was dying from cancer. She'd been given two weeks to live. Being a doctor, she understood exactly what was going on. She had three small kids. I arrived to find the husband crying. Wouldn't stop crying. He's about to lose his wife. The children are about to lose their mother. We moved in there. I'll tell you what, Jesus Christ showed up in that room. We prayed for her in Jesus' name and commanded those things to come off her. Glory to God. She was a skinny, frail Little lady, 41 years old, doctor, knew exactly what was happening in her body, stomach cancer, in immense pain. 
She's curled up in fetal position. On the bed, there was quite a bit of blood. It was not a pleasant sight. Laid hands upon her. She turned her head up and she said, the pain's leaving. She sat up that night, started eating the next day. <laughs> Glory to God. We then moved from Rotorua to Levin, where we conducted two more services. Glory to God again. God began to move in healing, many deliverances, holy laughter, spiritual drunkenness. The pastor was so moved. Glory to God. Can someone just run in my office and grab my briefcase, please? The pastor was so moved by what happened. You're going to need keys, bro. pastor was so moved by what happened, glory to God, he just was there, he was just gobsmacked and God was just really moving profoundly and uh, when I'd finished preaching, he said, pastor, he said, I, I want to bestow upon you honor. I said, it's fine, thank you, God gets the glory. No, no, I want to bestow upon you honor. I said, it's okay, I said, God gets the glory, I said, it's not me, it's, it's him and he said, will you please come here? He had me in front of the church and he removed from his neck what they call a, an honor stone. And he gave it to me and I said, hang on. And he said, it's no funny business. He said, this, this is clean. He said, this is a courage stone. Yep, bring it out. This is a courage stone that my wife got me and it's, it's, it's something that they use as honor I'm hoping I've got it here. Glory to God. That there is hand sanded, handmade. And to a Kiwi person, if you're given one of these, it's a great honor. If you're given one of these and then you, de you decide that you're going to give it to someone else, it's actually in their culture, it's known as the highest honor that can be paid. And I was just gobsmacked because this is very special to the man that gave it to me. Glory to God. To hand over an honor stone is, 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 is it's just amazing. We then flew to Christchurch and uh, met with the Living Waters pastors and they invited us back and said, we definitely want you to come. They were preparing for a conference and um, we stayed in one of their houses, glory to God. And um, the people we're staying with, they said, look, we're just going to have a, a meeting, like just going to have a house church meeting, a little prayer meeting. W would you mind being part of it? And I said, Sure. No worries. The power of God broke out. We did 11 services in 11 days. If I count that one, as 12 services in 12 days. We did eight flights from the time we left to the time we come back. Covered thousands of kilometers. Two and a half thousand kilometers there. Two and a half thousand back. I don't know how many different places we went to. Glory to God. But it was just an amazing ministry tri trip some profound things happened, incredible things, but the testimonies of everybody, the youth, the adults, the older people, as they said, this is life changing. We went over to serve three churches, end up ministering in five. Now we've got six churches that want us to return. And I said, look, we'll probably look at coming back next year for the conference. They said, no, no, you've got to come before then. God gets the glory for everything. And I want to say to you, we need to be open to what God wants to do because you're about to see something that you might not have ever seen before. If you don't understand it, come and talk to someone who does. Because when God shows up and he starts showing off, things happen. But lives were transformed, lives were changed. A hundred people gave their lives to the Lord in one shape, form or another. Some had never been to church before. Some 
were definitely first-time conversions. Glory to God, if we can have that clip.